preparation of epoxides. We know two, way, two ways, that is, to prepare epoxides. In both cases, our substrate is an alkene, and we do an addition reaction. In the first, we treat an alkene with peroxy acid. In the second method, we treat our alkene with a halogen in water instead of CCL4. This makes a halohydrin. And then we use a base to deprotonate the alcohol, and it does intramolecular SN2 on the alpha carbon of the halide. Let's look at the details. So here is cyclohexene, and we're treating it with RCOOOH. The RCOOOH is the peroxy acid. And the peroxy acid can be metachloroperoxybenzoic acid or peroxyacetic acid. Here is the structure of MCPBA. We've got a benzene. that is actually benzoic acid, but it's peroxybenzoic acid because of the two oxygens. And then the chlorine is in the one, two, three, or meta position. And so MCPBA stands for meta chloro peroxy benzoic acid m c p b a the compound h3c COOH is acetic acid. Now, CH3COOOH is peroxyacetic acid. Epoxidation is stereospecific. When you have an alkene, You have a bunch of atoms in the same plane, six atoms in the same plane, all of the atoms associated with that pi bond. So if you start out with cis, you get, that's, sorry, if you start out with a cis alkene, you end up with a cis epoxide. If you start out with a trans alkene, you end up with a trans epoxide. Now, what we've shown here is the epoxidation happening above the plane of the alkene, but it could just as easily happen below. So when the epoxide oxygen adds below the plane of the alkene, you'll get the enantiomer. It'll still be cis or trans. But this is represented by the three-membered ring being upside down with the oxygen on the bottom instead of up top. So, when you do epoxidation of a cis alkene, you get a pair of cis epoxides. And when you do epoxidation of a trans alkene, you get a pair of trans epoxides. The other route to make an epoxide goes through a halohydrin. If you first treat an alkene with a halogen molecule X2, it can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine, in water, you get a halohydrin, which if you then treat with sodium hydroxide, it does an intramolecular Williamson ether synthesis. Let's look at the details. In the first step, the pi bond of the alkene 
attacks the chlorine and we get loss of a leaving group and we get back attack. The cyclic three-membered cation, the halonium ion, in this case chloronium, is identical to the intermediate we get when we are doing halogenation addition reaction. In the second step, water acts as a nucleophile and attacks one of the ring carbons, and this opens the ring. And now we have our protonated halohydrin. Water deprotonates that to give our neutral halohydrin. We then use sodium hydroxide to deprotonate the halohydrin. And now we have this alkoxide, which is going to do nucleophilic attack on the alpha carbon of the alkyl halide. So the curved arrows look like this. There's our nucleophilic attack, and the halogen leaves. and we produce our epoxide. Here's an exercise for you. Which reactions are going to produce this epoxide? Note that the epoxide is trans with regards to the methyl groups. Pause and work your video. So to get the trans epoxide, whether you use peroxy acid or the bromohydrin route, you have to start from a trans alkene. Notice choices A and B are cis alkenes. The methyls are cis. Choices C and D are trans. So we need to use choices C and D.